Hello friends, it's Molly here and today I'm going to be doing a video on guide dog equipment and guide dog accessories. As many of you know, I do have a guide dog. I'm actually on my second guide dog. I got my first one, Gypsy, picture here, when I was 13 years old from the Mira Foundation. She worked for seven years up until May of 2014 when she very sadly passed away from cancer. And I trained with my next guide dog, Gallup, picture here, um, in August of 2014. And I got him specifically August 8th. And he has been amazing. He's my big horse boy. And both my darlings are just incredible. <laughs> He's groaning on the floor here. Yes, you're incredible. Yes. I did get my first guide dog very, very young. Uh, 13 isn't a very common age. Most people or most schools only accept clients from 16 and up. And I remember way back when I was um, looking for schools when I was 13, some schools were even 18 and up. I don't know if it is anymore, but I definitely know 16 and up is very typical. The Mirror Foundation is actually the first school in the world who started accepting children um, for guide dog and service dogs. So it's a very amazing program that they have. They were the first guide dog school in Canada. They started back in 1981, I believe they opened their doors. Um, and so I'm very honored to be a graduate from them. I think they're such an incredible school and I really encourage uh, everybody to check it out. I'll put the link to their website down below. Learn a little bit more about them. They accept clients from all over the world. They have a campus here in Canada, in Quebec. <laughs> and they have a campus in France. And they do a program right now at Mira USA, which I'll also link that site below, for children in the US looking for a guide dog. So, really amazing organization. But if you're in search of getting a guide dog, if you're doing your research, I really encourage you to do your research, to find a school that's best for you. Every school is a little bit unique, every school has pros and cons. The Mira Foundation is the perfect school for me but it might not be for everyone, so I definitely encourage everybody to do their own research and figure out what works for them. I've also done a guide dog Q&A video, which I will link down below. If you have any other questions by the end of this video that I didn't answer in that video, then definitely feel free to leave them down below or tweet me, and if I get enough, then I'll definitely do another guide dog Q&A video. I guess I will just start with the obvious here, the harness. So this is Gallup's harness. It is the brand new mirror style, just doing this, okay, so it's kind of awkward to show, but it does have, a, it's a beautiful quality leather, and it has this um, reflective strap at the front, so when we're walking at night, everybody can see us. It has the reflective straps on the side, which are stitched into the leather, which is perfect because they can't rip off or move or anything. And then it has a reflective tape on both sides of the handle. The leather at the top is so soft, and my favorite part about this harness is how squishy the handle is. I've touched a lot of guide dog harnesses from other schools because I have a lot of friends who have guide dogs or service dogs, and the one thing I find is the Mira harness is definitely the most comfortable in my hand. It's so squishy, it's filled with foam underneath and then the metal bar, so it's really nice on your hand, which is good because it's going to be in your hand all the time. And then it has the Mira logo on top here, or not the logo, but the name, which, not gonna lie, causes some confusion. People often think my dog is named Mira. Mm -mm. And then here on the sides, it has the Mira logo, which I will insert a close-up of here because it's really cool. It's like two dogs looking at each other that make the eyes of, of a man. So I think that's a really beautiful logo, very artistic, which I love. You can switch up the handles right here using these little toggles. And then this is the uh, strap that goes underneath the belly. It clips in really easily. Um, and then it's Velcro in case they expand or shrink in the tummy area. You can always make it fit to size. So that's the harness. And I guess for comparison, I'll show you Gypsy's harness right now. This is the older style harness and it's uh, much more beat up as you can probably already tell and it's a lot smaller because Gypsy was 65 pounds and Gallop is 90 pounds so I believe hers is the medium sized harness and his is the large pretty sure or hers might be even be the small actually I think hers is the small she was very slim she was very tall and very slim so hers does not have any reflective tape at the front it only has reflective tape on the little ears here and on the, the bars of the handle 
And what I don't like as much about this one is that these do slide, they're wrapped around versus sewn in. So they do, as you can see on this side, tend to um, rip and kind of really wear a lot more with, with uh, working. Um, everything else though is basically the same, other than the reflective on the sides. And then this again is obviously quite a bit more worn than Gallup's. Um, but all in all, this harness was just as good. Um, just a little less reflective, but the quality of the leather is absolutely beautiful in both harnesses. And then I'll show you Gypsy's Leash first. So this was Gypsy's Leash. This originally is the same, was the same color as what Gallup's is, which is like a tan leather, whereas now it's like a chocolate brown. It's super soft. It's like buttery leather because this was a working leash for seven years every single day so it definitely got some wear but this is like the classic guide dog style leash so you can extend it here you can extend it to be longer the the way I would have it working was when it was clipped up here then it can extend to this to wrap around things and then it can extend even Further, if you want to do a tie down, which is basically when I would say wrap this leash around a table leg or a chair leg just to make sure the dog's not going to go anywhere. If you've seen me speak, you've seen a chair on stage with me, which I always have my dogs hooked to. So yeah, just like that. And a lot of people love this style of leash and always ask where they can find it. I did find a seller on Etsy who makes these, so I will link that down below if you are interested. And um, those leashes are like the classic guide dog style. Every school I've seen pretty much has some kind of variation of that leash for their dogs. And then this one is Gallops. It's a little, little bit longer. Like I said, it's that lighter leather. It's even, it's a little bit darker now than when I got it even, but it does have Mira embossed into the leather there, which I'm sure the camera will not pick up. Again, exact same style. But on this one, I have a poop bag dispenser, so I keep it on the middle ring that does not move anywhere. This one specifically was from the Sheridan Hotel. They're an amazing hotel chain if you have a dog. They are super accommodating. They provide dog beds and treats, and they always give me a poop bag dispenser. But like I said, um, you can really get them anywhere. I also have this one as a backup, just a roll of the poop bags and one of these. This one's a little bit more beat up, but exact same concept. And then, what I love about Mira is, oh, you can probably hear the dog squeaking the toy out there. Um, hopefully that's not too annoying. Is uh, They're very accommodating. I am a girl. I love to wear my heels. So they gave me multiple different handle lengths so that I can switch them out when I want to wear my heels. So I still have the appropriate length of handle to go with my harness, which is perfect. And to go along with the harnesses, or the handles, I guess, I do have a do not pet me sign. So. Some people know this, but seems like a lot of people don't. You cannot pet a working dog when they are in their harness. It's a big no-no. Uh, it's very frustrating when it happens. So a lot of people do like to use these. My school provided this for me. You can also find them on places like Etsy. I found a great one on Etsy, which is totally customizable and has a pocket in the back. So I'll link that down below if anybody is looking for one. But this is really great. It's machine washable. It has the reflective tape on the sides. Red no sign with the dog and the hand going to pet it. So I cannot unfortunately use this on my standard everyday handle because I am super short and my 90 pound boy is super tall. So it's too awkward, it doesn't fit on the handle. But when I do use my longer handles, it fits perfectly because I can put it low enough that I still have room in my hand. It's not getting strangled like it is like that when I have my short handle on. And I still have room to use the handle at the bottom to crack. And then over here, I have my, whoop, just hit myself in the face. I have um, this horse hook. I got this in Kentucky back when I was doing speeches there in the fall. I love this. I hang it in my room. Every time I come in, take the harness and leash off, hook it on here. Every time I leave, I know exactly where it is. It's the most foolproof way of never losing the harness and leash and keeping them together at all times. So this, Having a specific designated hook is perfect, and I love that it's a horse because my boy, I call him my horse man because he's huge. He actually weighs more than I do. And he, uh, his name is Gallop, like a horse running, so I thought it was too perfect when I saw it. And it fits the harness just right. Then I guess I'll move on to collars. So every guide dog school 
does something different. Some use full chain collars or slip collars, whatever you want to call them. And some schools use martingales, which are part fabric, part chain. Mira uses a full chain collar, which personally I prefer. If you prefer the martingale, that's fine. But for me, I find I have more control with a full chain. So this is what I use. This was given to me for Gypsy. Still has all her tags on it. Gallop's wearing his, so I can't show you his. But this still sleeps uh, beside my bed every night. I put it on a hook and it uh, stays there all the time. I have obviously her regular tags, her mirror tag with all the mirror information, um, her shots, our local uh, dog license, whatever, but also some custom tags that I got for her. And I have those as well for Gallup. I found an amazing one again on Etsy. I'm obsessed. I'll link that seller down below. She has incredible ones. The one I got for him has two horseshoes inter locking yeah interlocking and I thought it was kind of super cheesy I know but like our relationship how it's the two of us bonded together and horseshoes represent good luck and obviously gallop the name it's a horse running so I just thought it was too perfect and I absolutely love it so I'll link that seller down below and they do actually have custom ones for service dogs they have one a specific one that I remembered that's the sign for autism which is the puzzle piece and it says autism assistance dog so I thought that was pretty cool I'm sorry I'm talking fast I'm just trying to get through this stuff so I'm not keeping you guys here for too long um, because they wear full chain collars which aren't that pretty and I'm really girly and into fashion and accessorizing I like to accessorize my dogs so um, I put regular collars on them as well but I basically, like the leash, I hook onto the, the chain, all the tags are on the chain, and then I just put a collar on as well, that's more for the look. So this one's Gallop, the manly colors, and it's all hand beaded. These are all little beads, and it's made by Masai Mamas in Kenya. It's a meet -a wee collar on leather, and I love it. Gallop got so many compliments on it, and Gypsy had one as well, which is hers, clearly a little bit more girly with the pastels, the pinks, the purples, the yellows, turquoise, and Mira, Mira, Mita, we actually started making those um, as a collaboration with me when I started working for them two years ago, two and a half years ago, and it was amazing to be able to collaborate with them on that, and I don't know if they still sell them, I'd like to think they do, but they are beautiful pieces. And I also love to put bandanas on my dogs. Gypsy literally had a drawer full every single day. Her bandana would match the outfit that I was wearing. It was intense. She had one for every holiday and Gallup is slowly collecting his as well. So that's a little fun piece. And then the coats. So one of the good parts about the extender strap on the belly is that I could extend it to be able to put a winter coat underneath. Despite my, both of my dogs having Bernie's Mountain Dog in them, they do get cold sometimes, especially when I'm out for long days working or if I'm somewhere like Saskatchewan or Alberta in the winter where it gets super cold, I like to be able to put a coat on them. So this one I found for Gypsy. I don't know what the company name is. I'll get somebody to let me know, somebody cited, and I'll link that down below. But this one was perfect for her. So cute, pink with the fur hood. I'm still looking for one for Gallup. I mean, it took me a while to find this one for Gypsy and she was only 65 pounds. So finding one for my 90 pound boy has been a little bit difficult, but I'm still searching. I found an amazing Etsy seller, link down below, um, who makes custom service dog jackets and she has like any pattern, color, design, lace, bows, everything, so cute. And she has patches that you can put on it like guide dog, do not pet me, I'm working, uh, seizure response dog, every everything you could imagine. And I was going to get one custom made but he's a little bit too big for what she does. So if your dog is smaller than mine you could probably get one which would be perfect because I, I thought it was great to be able to identify that he is a working dog. Even though of course the harness would still be on but nonetheless I'll link that down below for anybody who's interested. The next piece I will talk about is these. These are my ID cards. I believe most guide dog schools, if not all, do these, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I have one for both. I'll put images really close up because they're pretty cute. Um, pictures of baby Molly and little puppy Gypsy and then not baby Molly and puppy Gallop. Um, and then on the front they just have the mirror information and on the back they have the human rights law, the contact number, all that kind of stuff. And so basically if a store tries to deny me or a public place to, tries to deny me, 
which they are not allowed to do. I have that there to be like, BAM! You can't! <laughs> Um, and believe it or not, I do have to use it, so it's very handy to have. I know in the U.S. you cannot ask a service dog owner for ID, where in Canada you are allowed to. So Over here, I have the treat jar. This is where I keep all of my puppy treats um, for their off-leash time, their fun time, when I want to give them a little reward. I have them here. This is really important for me to make a note of. Guide dogs do get off time. Whenever my dog is at home, he's off, he's living life like a regular puppy, and they do get a life outside of work. They love to work, at least both of mine have, and they wouldn't make it through the programs if they didn't. So they love to work, but they also love to play, which is why I have those treats, and this giant toy basket. This was bought for Gypsy, which is why it's pink, but it says my toys on it. It has tons of toys, as you can see. They are not lacking. Um, and he loves his toys, he loves his playtime, and I completely, totally allow it, as long as he is off harness. So, I do, of course, have things um, like brushes and grooming stuff, uh, shampoos and all that, but I didn't think that was really necessarily that important or interesting to show. Um, I don't put booties on my dogs. My dogs are trained in Quebec. They are very used to the snow and cold and neither of them have needed boots or had a problem. So I haven't gone out to search for them. I do have a balm that I put on their paws to make sure no salt gets in. I can't find it at the moment so I'm not going to show it but basically it's pet friendly. You smooth it onto their paws before you leave. It creates a barrier between their paw and the salt and then you wipe it off. I find it a lot more convenient than boots. They can't kick it off. So that's what I use and that's about it. So like I said, if you have any other questions about my guide dog, training, anything, any of the equipment, then please comment down below, tweet me, let me know, and I'll definitely do a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.